Hi, I'm John from Evans Cooling Systems. We're here at the Rare Spares R&D Centre to install Evans Waterless Coolant in this 1969 XT Fairmont. It's got a 351 Windsor, stroke to about 408, 600 horsepower. Last time we were here at Rare Spares R&D Centre, we did an installation on an EH. Now we're looking at a completely different type of, of engine. So when installing Evans, you need to take a couple of things into consideration as compared to a stock engine. Obviously, the radiator is a crucial part of the cooling system. You can't just use a stock radiator on this sort of engine. So in particular with Evans, what we're looking for is a good size radiator, three or four core, single pass. The second thing we're gonna look at is the pump. The pump is a stock belt driven pump, which is fine, which is gonna give us the sufficient flow that we need. The first step to installing Evans waterless engine coolant is to remove water from the cooling system. We're going to allow the coolant to drain completely from the radiator, but there's still going to be a heap of coolant remaining in the block. Once we have drained from the bottom hose, we're going to disconnect the top hose, and in this particular case, we're going to remove the thermostat. What we want to do is we want to blow some air through the top hose into the block to push additional coolant out, but also tight horsepower generates a lot of heat. Evans works differently to water, so we're going to leave the thermostat out. And it's a bit of a debatable topic, leave the thermostat in or out. With Evans, for high horsepower engines, generally we remove them. If it was a stock engine, we'd leave it in place. Evans gets to temperature a lot quicker. It picks up heat more readily. Um, and what we want to do is we want to send that coolant straight to the radiator without any limitations or restrictions. With the Windsor engines, there is a bypass going from the thermostat housing back into the pump. What we're gonna do is we're gonna remove that bypass and we're gonna plug it. And to plug it, we're gonna use these rubber stoppers here. Once we've done that and we've blown air through the block, we reattach the top hose, reattach the bottom hose and fill the system up with our prep fluid. Once the prep fluid's in the cooling system, cap on, start the engine and let it run for 15 or so minutes. Prep fluid's not a coolant, keep an eye on your temperature gauge, um, but for that sort of 10 or 15 minute period, it should be perfectly fine. So the prep fluid will circulate through the cooling system, turn on the heater, get it through the heater core, and, and then basically once that 10 or 15 minutes is over, you can drain that, that prep fluid out. Be sure to let the cooling system cool first because the prep fluid will be very hot. And if you fill the system with the prep fluid, bottle it up, put it in an airtight container, and pass it on to a friend or keep it on the shelf just in case. So once the engine's cooled and we've drained the prep fluid out, we'll begin the process of filling the system with Evans.